Name another podcast like this. Who gon' bring it to the table? Boss talk. Who your girlfriend favorite? Boss talk. We gon' do it how you want it. Boss talk. Yeah, everybody on it. Check it, check it, check it. This is Unique House. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nothing. You know, Madea, walk well, go on. I want y'all to stop what you're doing right now. Go like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms. I mean, our Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Snapchat, you name it, we're on it. But if you want to see all our visuals, you got to hop on over to our YouTube channel. There you'll see all our visuals. And we love to have your subscription, but even more, we would love your membership. How you find our membership is under each and every video that we do in the description section below. You, there is a link that says join a membership. Click that. It takes you through all of the different procedures. No time. You'll be a member. Because y'all always see us on the street and be like, how can you, we support the brand? Because y'all love what we're doing. This is how you can support the brand. And thank you in advance. Man, hey, man, we got a guy here today. He don't need no introduction. This guy right here. He hails. He's like, he, he been here before, man. This is Boss Talk 101. Malik Youssef is in the building. Yes. This guy right here, man. Listen, man. I seen you on the internet the other day, man, and, and like I said, you, you was enjoying that music, man. The vibe was straight, man. We're going to get all into that, man, but thanks for coming back on Boss Talk. Thank you for having me. Man, you one of them ones, it. man. You family, man. It. Yes, so, sir. Man, you know, I call you on several occasions yes. just trying to figure out, hey, man, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? Yeah. And you always answer that phone, so thank you, man. Yes, sir, brother. Thank, thank you. you. Have you been seeing us? We've been working a little Y'all bit. Y'all been huh? working, bro. <laughs> Y'all outside right now. Sure. Oh, man. Yeah. So just let's talk about it a little bit, man. You, What you been doing this year, man? Like, we, It's been a year since we was here. It's been a year. We're here in Las Vegas, Nevada. Yeah. It's Once going again. down. So, so let's talk about it. Super Bowl was yesterday. Was you out here for Super Bowl? I sure was. Oh, how, how was it? Did you go? No, I had some events. Events, yeah. I had events, some meetings, and studio with some artists that came through, and it was good, man. And then uh, we had a, a Kanye uh, Yay event last night for Vulture's release. We had the number one album in the world right now. Wow. Wow. Yeah. <clears throat> we had a hiatus, you know, a couple years. Right. How How, how is it uh, being... Uh, Reconnecting with Kanye, I mean, it's always a, a task of great arduity to deal with Kanye. You know, what I'm saying yeah. like you understand somebody that's this enigmatic, and you know, trying to figure him out, which is the best course for me, but the hardest course. A lot of people they work with him, but they don't try to figure him out. You know, what I'm saying. How was that? What was that call like when it, when you knew you guys was about to do something else together? Um, it came kind of unexpectedly because we had been. We have been in, uh, you know, we have we we have, we have these skirmishes all the time where we don't we don't deal with one another. You know what I'm saying? It's Why? Simple. I mean, we're two different type of people. It know? happens, right? Yeah, it's just that's how brothers do too. Yeah, we're brothers. You know what I'm saying? But we don't, you know, we don't see eye to eye on most things. But we we do see eye to eye on this creative process and music. Mm-hmm. How do how is the vultures doing? Number one album. Cause I saw when he when he when he posted that he's dropping it and so forth the album, and I was reading comments and some people love it and some people was like because a lot of people was in the comments was saying drop it on Spotify, so where was he dropping it? Well, we're on Apple, we're on Spotify, we're number one on Spotify, we're number one on Apple. Um, so I wonder why everybody was like, where is it? Like they, they were having a hard time finding it on Spotify for some reason. There could have been some glitches in the matrix, okay. possibly. I mean, you know, but um, I mean Kanye is so sporadic with things sometimes you never know what happened with 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 an executive or some shit you know what mm. i'm saying yeah so what it could what, be anything with him what <clears throat> happened when he took that lady's phone i wasn't there i seen it on the news i only i seen i seen it. it went crazy it went viral yeah she was filming him and she asked him a, a ardent question that was that would be disrespectful to anybody else yeah, you know, to you or to mm-hmm. me but people felt they can disrespect him and talk to him like that because he's a a public figure and they think they can just talk to bro any kind of motherfucking way and it ain't the case. Wow. Another thing that happened with him, he um he basically uh he responded in, in somebody's comment. He went he talked back to somebody and it blew their mind because mm. <laughs> they didn't know that, they that celebrities sense. would mm-hmm. say something back. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a pretty a pretty easy petty meter. He'll <laughs> he'll get on he'll get on that he'll get on that shit with you quick. Can't you know can't expect to, to shoot a shot at Kanye or throw a shot at Kanye and him not respond in some manner. Wow. You know, any given time, you know, he'll, he'll fire up on your ass. But he hasn't been doing it to just, like, regular people. You know what I mean? Fans. He mainly do it to other, like, celebrities. Yeah, but he'll fire up on the fan, too. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because wow. he's been having a lot of backlash about um, his wife. 
Did you say what? What word did you say? Huh? He's been having a lot of backlash because a lot of about, people about whose wife? His wife. See, shouldn't be no backlash about his wife. I know that's what I'm like. His wife, not I, motherfuckers out there. Wife. That's real. Right. That's real. It makes no sense. It's ridiculous. People got other shit to worry about. I would think. Mm -hmm. Besides Kanye's wife, that's living her happy life, not in any danger at all, and because she shows her body in a certain way that pleases her husband. Like, right. what the fuck do you mean? Like, what? Okay, well, don't do it then. Don't do it then and see where your husband is. But you know how they always say, don't get your friends in your business. You know what I mean? Because when I'm reading these tabloids or whatever, and it's saying, well, this came from her friends saying this, 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 and this. So I'm like. Yeah, where they, where they husband at? I'm just asking. I don't know them. I don't either. Where they husband at? That's real. I want to ask you about uh, what we just <clears throat> witnessed um, the Grammys. The Grammys is something mm -hmm. that a lot of people, I mean, even Jay Z, he had a statement that he made about uh, his wife, uh, wives, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but like about her and, you yeah. know, her not having a, I think he, it was, she had never won album of the year, right? Never. And But she has more Grammys than everybody. Exactly. Okay, so just um, what did you think when you seen him make that statement? I was proud. First of all, y'all know how much I love Hov. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know how how much I love being his brother and being in his downline and his and and being also somebody that he calls on as a co collaborator in the creative space. Mm. It's a great honor for me, and it's been a great honor in my life to be able to work with him and the the whole rock. Even when Kanye was there, and now that Vic Mince is there, I think he told a truth that we didn't expect from him. Mm because the Grammys has given so many nominations and awards, but I, I sat there and experienced it with Beyonce on Lemonade where we didn't win the album of the year and we were clearly the album of the year. We were clearly the album of the year and even Adele was like, nah, we didn't. Right. I don't deserve this. And I was hurt because I hadn't had an album of the year before. Wow, what year, what, what year was that? That was... Uh, 17, 18, something like that. And it hurt you because you guys, you, you had a hell so of a... so hard. And, and, and y'all won how many Grammys that year? I think we won like five. Five, and still no album of the year. Nope. R&B album of the year, but not album of the year. They gave it to Adele, and she had uh, one single. Lemonade was transformative. It changed the lives, especially for black women, to be allowed to, in public, be upset with the behavior of their mate and out loud say it. And everybody resonated. And she was complaining about the treatment that she was receiving from someone who she loved. And she, nobody got to tell her, calm down, don't be so mad. She got to say all kind of curse and say all kind of shit to my beating up another bitch and all that. And let that, everybody had to let that happen. Because white women in movies, they can go wild and tear up shit and be mad, but black women, they aren't given those graces. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And in Lemonade, it allowed black women, in, I mean, I'm being specific, black women to vicariate through her and her pain and her outrage at something that took place. Now, we might say, oh, just one, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter what we feel, it's what she feels, and that's where we got to get to the place. But what does this black woman feel, and why can't we validate her feelings? We might not have, we don't have to agree, but we can validate. And that album was indicative of that. And to lose album of the year to a, a woman that had one song, and I love Adele, and I've lost to her before. I lost to her with all the lights, and I love her, and she's a sweet person, really, honestly. Um, but wasn't right. So yeah. who chooses? Who choose the winners? How how is how is this done? It's by um, it's by committee. Everybody votes, and a lot of people that's on the Grammy board have a vote. And they vote in categories that some of the time they don't have anything to do with. And when it comes to album of the year, they vote for somebody that maybe their grandkids like or some shit like that. So mm -hmm. it's just a bunch of different voters. And I, I can't, but I still can't believe that that album, as big as it was, with the movie and the poetry right. by Washington, shout out to the sis, um, that that album wasn't album of the year. It was, it was one of the greatest albums of all time. Mm -hmm. You know, I put it up there with like a thriller. Mm. You know, wow. I just like I said, you you are one that that you go back so far with the history of the music, and you work with so many from. I mean, even from Carl Thomas. Mm -hmm. What was up with? 
Do you? And this is going to be totally off base. So we don't know what's, uh, I don't know what else I'm going to get, but I'm going to ask this question because it popped up in my head. Um, do you think Faith really was with Tupac? It's hard to tell, man. You, <laughs> I mean, you know, Pac is, is, is one of the greatest storytellers in the world, and all stories that I told may not be true. Um, I don't know. I don't it know. It just popped up. I don't, I don't know. know Faith that well. We're cordial, and I, I, I care about her, and I love her. You know, she's been part of my trajectory in my life. Um, when she did the the, um, the remix with Carl Thomas, that was one of the happiest moments of my That's life. That's what I'm telling you. That's what made me think of it, because I was like, okay, I remember Carl Thomas mm -hmm. and Faith mm -hmm. were hanging out. Um, Emotional remix. She Emotional did the, remix. That gave us four, four videos um, on on TV at the same time. We had Emotional we had Wish I Never Met Her, Summer Rain, Emotional Remix. We had four songs out at the same time. Wow. So crazy. And that's that what I'm saying. Like like I said, during that time, you, the, you, you it was after Pac had passed. Yes, and yes, all yes. That. So this was way, after, it, but. Like three. Like and Biggie had passed. Five years after, yes. Yeah, and years. Biggie had passed. And, and Biggie changed over too. Yeah, Peace so, Be Upon Biggie. Peace man, Be Upon Pac. You, yeah, man. Like, like journey. those guys, man, I think, uh, when they come down to hip hop, they changed a lot of people's mm. attitudes when it come down to the way you approach rap battling, mm -hmm. beef. I think that was one that was a shock. When it happened, it shocked us. You know what I mean? Like yeah. everybody was like, dang, Pac did. Then Biggie, right after that, bam, he did. You know, and we knew that they had issues, right? Far as the the way the music looked. Yeah, but okay. when, when friends become foes, it's way more intense than just some random guy you make an enemy of. When friends become foes, they, they bring that whole history with you and the vitriol that comes with that of they knowing your secrets and your shortcomings and your idiosyncrasies and so on and so forth. So it becomes way more toxic environment than it would be just running into a motherfucker on the street getting into it with somebody, you feel me? But did you ever think about that when you started to deal with P. Diddy and just the, the, the background, the way that people look at him, the way that people think about him for us? Uh, when it comes to Biggie, when it comes down to what happened in that that whole era, well, I was dealing with Puff before Biggie changed over. Really? Yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. So I thought it was after Biggie was still alive when I started dealing with Puff. I started being closer to Puff when Biggie passed away. Peace be upon him. When Carl Thomas, so I was at the, I was at Bad Boy every day. So you I was, was going to sign to Bad Boy. So you was talking with Biggie and everything. Did you meet Biggie? Oh yeah, yeah. Biggie, I did his first concert in Chicago. Wow, yeah. man, I didn't even know that, man. Yeah, they, they, were, that? they were on a promotional tour. It was good. It was him, Usher, Craig, Mack, and Puff at the Riviera. And wow. I was I was the host. Yeah, it was good. And you never. But so then you've seen his whole journey. Oh yeah, yeah. Me and my brother were riding. He had a, a drop top Mustang. We were riding down the street or down Lawrence Avenue onto. Um, I think Sheridan, Sheridan Road, maybe. Not Sheridan Road. Was it Sheridan Road? I think it was Sheridan, maybe. In a drop-top limousine after the concert. See, so when I asked you about Pac and, 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 and Biggie, I thought you didn't, he wasn't even there. Oh, yeah, no. You see what I'm saying? When I asked him, meaning I didn't think you had a relationship with Biggie. Yeah, yeah, Pac introduced me to Biggie as Fat Chris. Really? Uh, yeah, my boy Fat Chris, he called, yeah. But you got to stand, my lineage with, with the henchmen I don't want to go into too much into that, but okay. you know, and I shout out my man Tom Boots and who really made a big mark in this industry. You know, even to do love and hip hop, Tom Boots is one of my oldest and closest and dearest friends. Wow! And um, that's the original Henchman Studio is where Tupac, uh, the shooting incident took place. Really? Mm -hmm. And my my brother who I love right now, Sean Penn, um, aka Lil Sean, was there, and you know. Pac was saying that those guys set him up, and that's I don't believe that's true. But he really was having he he felt that way. He came up out of I mean they say he was he was he was conscious when 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 everybody came downstairs. He didn't see the faces. I don't know what happened. Man, the movie sells it away. Sean was upstairs. Biggie was upstairs, so they definitely didn't shoot him. You know, I mean, Tupac was good at making his own enemies, like any of us are. You know, when you loud and you're you know, and I mean, I look back on, I was, talk, I was talking to Young Nobel about this the other day when I look back on my relationship with Tupac and I was trying to be his drill sergeant, trying to tell him, shut up, you're gonna die. But some people, they like, I'd rather die than shut up. Mm -hmm. Wow. 
I've heard that before. Yeah. So that's just and the so way I was, he was. I was approaching it the wrong way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I regret how my relationship with Tupac was, you know? I, and, and now we got, I got to get into this because it came out on the show, you know? Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Danny Boy was upset <laughs> as hell Damn. when I got to Chicago about, Damn. you know, he said that he was totally not with what you had said on mm-hmm. here. He didn't understand why you would even say that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, what the hell? What did I witness? You know, yeah. I didn't even. I was really when it hit me. Yeah, it surprised the hell out of me. Yeah, and it should have. You know, um, you were blindsided by that, and it's it's, it's really one hundred percent my fault because um, I've been telling the story so so long for so many years, and I've been miswording, and I should be better with word and become a wordsmith, and I understand the power of word, sound power, but you know, in my mind. Is playing out the right way, and I'm saying it in a in a in a more, I guess, a, a fast way that I'm glossing over the details. Yeah, Danny Boy's 100 percent right. Suge never bullied Danny Boy. Suge loved Danny Boy. He loves Danny Boy. Okay. Suge was the one advocating for Danny. Danny was young. He's not understanding that people are manipulating his studio time and all this. Because Pac wanted Danny Boy. Now, it might have been some manipulation on that. Pac wanted Danny Boy on every song. The other people at Death Row, and I'm not going to say no names, they wanted Nate Dogg on every song. Okay. Even if it was Tupac's song, put Nate Dogg on it. So Tupac could record something, they'll put Nate on it. Tupac come back in, nah. Because, you know, Danny Boy one of the greatest singers. Oh, mm-hmm. he dope. When he comes to, to singing. Ever, we, we've, I mean, he could have fit in in any era in music. He could have been in with Nat King Cole. He could have been in Motown era. He is flawless. His gift is beyond comprehension. You know what I'm saying? He's probably, I mean, I would say top five for me. Yeah, yeah, he's good. I mean, shit. Had Death Row survived their own debacle? I don't, I don't see why he wouldn't have been great in R. Kelly. Wow. Mm. His songwriting ability all his skills, and I, I love that dude, and I did misspeak, and he's, he's like, no, nigga, Suge did not, and he's right, Suge never bullied him, and when I say Suge and them was bullying him, that's wrong, I should have said the member, people at Death Row was trying to bully him, keep him off of records, this is from Pac's mouth, though, Yeah, they don't want Danny on these records, man, they, they bogus, they trying to push him around, trying to bully him, you know, and bully might be a rough word to use, but it's, it's a word that, that elicits um, reaction, like when Kanye was like, they bullied me backstage. Nobody, we, we didn't, nobody bullied you, Kanye. You know, but <laughs> we did get into it. I did get into it with Kanye. Same thing with Danny Boy. So I apologize to Danny Boy because I love him. And I hate that he feels like I'm slighting him. And it's my fault because I didn't say the right words. But Suge was with Danny Boy being on all the songs. Okay. Suge was with that because Danny Boy was his artist outright. Nate Dogg came through him through another group of people in death row. But Danny Boy was a Suge night signing. Yeah, yeah. That's how cold the man is. Mm. At 17, 18. Wow. Do you think, okay, when you look at Danny Boy, I, he also talked about the Pac being shot, not Pac, but Suge being shot, sorry, and uh, that he... Um, uh, he, and you said you didn't shoot him. I said I did not shoot Suge Knight. You did say that. I said I did not shoot. But Suge he Knight. like he better stop playing with that. Like what is the? Nah, he's, 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 that, see, that's where he out of bounds. at. like you don't get to tell a real goon, but he better do nothing. Like that ain't that ain't that's not within your realm of capabilities, brother. I love you, you know. And I would never want to engage in any kind of negativity with Danny Boy, somebody who I love and respect. But all that, you know. The last time I saw Suge was in this hotel. Okay. Physically. We went in the bathroom. Me and Suge walked into the bathroom. He had his security guy with him, which he should. And we talked it out a little bit. And then after that, some other shit didn't go right. You know what I'm saying? And all that. But Pyru Lu, who I love, I hold down his niece right now, who's one of Suge's protectors and looked out for him. You know, that could be... You know, me misspeaking, maybe Suge said he don't need no protection, but people looked out for Suge. That's for 100% show. It's like people look out for me in L.A. Mm-hmm. Ain't no secret. You better have somebody watching your back at all times. It's got to be a circle. Men work in circles. It's a 360. It's a cipher. 
I'm watching your back, you watch mine. That's the circle. The last person in the circle is being watched by the previous person, the pre last person watching the first person. That's how I gotta go. But all this, be careful. Careful of what? I got 82 arrests on my record, bro. Wow. Police encounters, all that. Officer friendly alert, uh-uh. No, it ain't that. But I understand that it elicited that response from him to protect his reputation as like, I'm not no punk, I don't get bullied. And I don't see Danny Boy as a punk in any kind of way. I feel like he a stand-up guy. He take care of his kids. I have always been an advocate and a fan of Danny Boy. Ever since I've known him and proud, hella proud, but all that, careful and all that, nah, me and Suge talked face to face, not telephone. Right here in this hotel, my word bond to a lot and everything I love. And I'm really that person. I'm really from that place. I'm, I'm BPS in for sure. And yeah. ain't nobody going to deny that. Everybody know it. Just being in gangland don't make me a real soldier. That's just part of what it is. Me being on that TV show is cool. But I got so much more to offer than that. But I don't, want, I don't like going back to that place. That's real. I don't like going back to that place. Because I got kids. And I, I, I just don't want to disrupt the community that I come from and I live in. I gotta elevate. Yeah, and yeah. there's something, like but I said. That, but that, that talk, and I understand that came from a hurt place, so mm -hmm. I, I'm willing to overlook that, but yeah, don't do that, though. Don't, don't question my integrity, because my, my shit's written in stone. Wow. I just... Pun I, intended. No, I, I get it. I get it. <laughs> I, 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 I just really like, like, when I think about, you know, all the things that you've seen, you've seen how... Okay, the gang violence, the, the, the things that happen in these different inner cities and communities, things that I've seen, I've seen you try to, you know, reach back and do some things to help correct different things. I mean, like, is that something that you, you still, you know, do to this day? To this day, right now. Always trying to help. I, right now. I got shorties that's at war with each other that's in my phone on different sides of my phone. Wow. You know, my cousin, who I, whom I love, I was with last night, Bump J., you know, he had Goon Squad. I was implement. I was in there solving problems inside Goon Squad, which was an amalgamation of different gang members. You feel me? Or nation members. I don't like, like use the word gang like that because they shortened it. They called the Italians and the Greeks and the 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 the, the Russians and the, the Japanese, and they call them gangsters and they call us gangs. I don't like that. Wow. What What about uh, Mama Doug? I I I know she her her. They they pretty much uh, they convicted those guys, um, and she got a tattoo of her son in her arm. Yeah, too. what 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 do you think about that? I was cool with Duck, you know. Um, I'm not so close with Mama Duck, but I was cool with Duck. Um, but obviously, people know how close I am with Dirk and what Dirk did for me. Um, mm -hmm. So that's not that. So my how my my code my value code and my my um, my value chain is not just based on what people do for me, but what they mean to me as a person. You know, people don't know this. I was there, I think the day, I was there with Jay Boogie and no ID the day Dirk and Reese got signed to Def Jam. Mm. Wow. In the studio and also when, when Chop got his record deal. They was all in the studio together. Wow. And I was saying then how special Dirk was. And he had just had his baby, little, little Dirk, who got to be now. God damn, I was uh, 09, maybe. That little boy got to be big. Little, 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 little Dirk <laughs> got to wow. be big. But Dirk came and did the CNN episode for me, you know, in the middle of Chicago where it's Opset and so on and so forth. Vic Mensa showed up. You know what I'm saying? Fireman showed up. Do or Die showed up. For me, it's not because I'm some television personality and they knew they was going to win an Emmy, which they did, but it's because they know the value I hold in Chicago and the space I hold in Chicago, you know? And I understand that there's going to be lack of peace because of people getting into with each other and there's blood being, there's blood being spilled, you know? I understand that when blood's being spilled, you want retribution. It's human nature. But we have to figure out how not to involve you know, entire communities. I had a homie out here, and I'm gonna in, well, in L.A. Who some something happened to him. He's like, I'm gonna shoot the park up, and I I bopped with him for two hours. Wow. 
for him not to do it. He clicking the nine. And, I'm going, I'm not leak. You know, I don't care about no jail. But I got homies doing 30 years. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying you scared of jail. Ain't nothing to be scared of. You know what I'm saying? It's just that do you want to be there? Mm, mm. Not about fear. Do you want to be separated from society in that way? If so, then do, do the deleterious behavior that gets you there. You know? So I hate to see them little brothers go to the penitentiary. I hate to see duck being put in the ground. But that is a consequence of the life that we do choose when we choose to pick a side and mob up and, and, and put a flag across our chest, you know, or a tattoo on our face. But, you know, this is also a way to gain protection, gain favor, gain status in a community that's bereft of resources. I understand full well why I became stone, which lets me and allows me to look at them and understand why they became BDs or GDs or vice lords or kings or, 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 or saints or, you know, or cobras, you know, or, or Spanish gangsters or insanes, anything. This is a part of a community where you gain favor and it's dangerous, but you gain, gain favor for being in it. It's dangerous. It's dangerous being in the hood, not plugged. It's probably more dangerous being in the hood, not plugged. You build yeah. a family. You, it's of course. Of course you build a family and they protect you and sometimes they take from you, but they're not going to let anybody else come and do that to you. Mm -hmm. You feel me? So I understand that too. And, you know, Mama Duck, I don't really know her like that. You know what I'm saying? But I hate that she lost a son. No, me too. You know, and I hate that the mothers of the little homies on the BD side got to see their babies going to them Desmo Crips. Because it probably maybe, maybe could have been handled another way. But our emotions, we don't check our emotions. You know, people, we're not good students, man, when we out in these streets. We're not good students. We're not good listeners. We we drawn off mainly, mainly emotion. Mm -hmm. That's why I was glad to come on here and clear, clear everything up about Danny Boy and stuff I, that he was saying. I know it was emotional, you know. And I know Danny loved me. And I and I did, and I was wrong the way I said what happened to him. Because Suge, again, Suge never, Suge was on Danny's side full on. But he couldn't stop these other people from marginalizing Bro Bro and trying to put him to the back. But he's such a, a high spirit, he didn't even notice that was happening. Pac had to alert us to that. Let me ask you this. Um, do you, when you look at like, um, P did in the situation that he's mm. in right now. Mm. I was going to ask like, that like what, mm. what are you, what, what are your thoughts? Because there's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff being said right now about a guy who you, you know, you. you, you yeah, y'all, y'all, y'all know with. I love Puff. That's right. So y'all know I love Puff. You gotta, you gotta help me understand where you at with that. Yeah, yeah I can love a person. I love their actions. Wow. I'm allowed to do that. I'm allowed to love you and not love what you did. And, um, and my thing with Puff is more on people talking about the business of him. He did straight business with me. It wasn't to my benefit fully, it was to his benefit more, but it was straight business. He said, hey Malik, you gonna sign off your rights, I'm gonna give you $15,000, and, and you don't get no rights on this, you don't get no residuals. I said, cool. As a grown man, I can't look back and have buyer's remorse and be like, well, he shoulda, no. He told me what it was. I said, A-OK. -okay. And you agreed. I Same agreed. Thing. Well, that's why I be talking about even Tiffany Haddish and all these people that's complaining about their pay. And I, mm -hmm. I'm like, there had to be a contractual agreement when that people you made these to. decisions. But now, all of a sudden, they're being underpaid. there's an outcry. What, what's, a drop, what's a drop of water? What's a glass of water worth to you in the desert? Everything. If, if I said, hey, man, to, a, to somebody in the desert, I got a glass of water for you. All you got to do is give me your next three born children. They going to take that deal. Wow. Oh, they going to take that deal every day of the week. Mm -hmm. So when we come from these communities that's bereft of resources, you know, it, it, it leads to predation. It leads to people coming in and saying, I can get all this from you for this little bit of money. And this is a capitalist society, so America encourages this behavior. But, you know, we don't, we don't, we don't, um, hold our politicians to the same standard we hold a kid that's from Harlem that's a, a rap mogul. Wow. They line item in money, send it to Ukraine, wherever they want to send it to, and we don't, we focused on Puff. Now, the, the sex stuff with Cassie, I know Cassie, she cool, you know, but, you know, it's going to be an unpopular statement. Like, 
the kind of drugs and the kind of sex you have is kind of for you. That's a you thing. You know, well, she wasn't in a position to say no. What do you mean she wasn't in a position to say no? Did she, because she, she didn't want to say no to the lifestyle or she was scared to leave. Well, let me tell you something about scared. She ain't scared now. She ain't scared now. She came out of the whole book, got a whole bunch of money. Or she got more mature. No, I don't think so. You can't, you can't have a relationship with a man and he say, this is what I want, this is what I'm expecting, and then stay there and then get upset and want to take his lifestyle with you when you leave. Was this a money grab? That's right. You can't take his lifestyle with you. You leave him, you leave his lifestyle. He has the parameters. This is what he wants. You know, I have parameters with somebody in my life, my children, my wife, everybody. I have parameters in my life. This is what I want. This is what I expect. Now, if he harmed her physically, I have a problem with that. But if she agreed to have adult, because well, she was young. Well, what's young? She wasn't underage, was she? She wasn't underage. Right. The, the, if the law say this is the age, you know, I mean, but you know, I would like to hear about the, the UPS guy she had sex with too. Put that in the book. That's not that's not scintillating though. Wow. What about that guy? Everybody's talking about the famous dudes. Yeah, and this dude, he was famous and he was a football player. What about the dude that worked at the local chicken spot that lived his mama house on the, in the air mattress downstairs that you was fucking on? Not, and I'm not putting that on Cassie. I don't know her personal history except for what she tells us. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about we know that that happens. Wow. But, um, so I was on the air mattress fucking with bitches that was above <laughs> my station. So. so you know. No, but do you think he's going to get jail time? Prison time? Puff. 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 Mm. Or you think the money's going to... I, I, I think it's a... Cause I, I don't think it's a, uh, it's a criminal... It's a criminal case. Mm-hmm. You know? It's not a criminal case. So, you know, and if he don't pay the money, he could be in contempt of court. Mm-hmm. That type of deal. You know? But it's, it's not it's not a criminal situation that he's facing. She's not saying he took something from her. She's saying it was it, it was rough for her mm-hmm. to have sex with prostitutes. Okay, I'm sure it is. You know, I've never had sex with a prostitute, but I, I don't know how rough it is. But maybe it would be rough for me. I don't know, but I'm not putting myself in that position. I got a question. Hold I, on, I want to ask stick on something okay, right here. Go ahead. So um, when you when y'all were talking about how the actresses have the outcry, okay, and um, I think a lot of times they felt a certain way because the outcry was, or the mistreatment was feeling that way because it's from somebody of the same color doing it to them, mm-hmm. compared to anybody else. You should be picking. You should be trying to give me more to have my worth come up com- compared to this other person who is degrading me right now. I understand that, yeah. You see what I mean? So I'll say that from a business standpoint. That's not, the studio director, producer, is, that's, they're not, unless you're assigned to them as an actor, that, that's not their job. Their job is to make this film as efficiently as possible for the least money as possible. Mm-hmm. That's their real job. Now you're saying responsibility, communal responsibility. Okay, let's look at that. Let's investigate the communal responsibility. Okay, Tiffany, you know, and I only met Tiffany a couple of times and I like her a whole lot though, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Um, okay, Tiffany, tell me how you're structuring your, your production company because I'll flock to it if your deal is much better than the one you got. And you should be putting out movies right now. You should be raising money on the fact that the community is going to support you and you want to support young black women in, in entertainment. And I think that's a valid thing. I do all the time, but understand this. These people's job is not to edify you. Like Kanye's job is not to make me the greatest artist in the world. That's not his job. It's not Travis' job to make sure I get on stage with him. It's not Travis Scott's job, even though we got the relationship that's almost 20 years at this point, 2007, you know? So understand what we're talking about here. We're talking about business. You're into it. You're doing acting as a business. You're not doing acting to be on Broadway. You know, you're doing it to to be famous, and to hope that your fame gains garners you more money. So sometimes your entry level job is going to be entry level. Mm -hmm. You work in the fry, shorty. You know, and there's probably I don't know. I'm saying she's a unique talent, but there's probably four thousand other female actresses in Hollywood that fit the bill and she got chose. 
I gotta ask you, um, the Killer Mike was arrested yeah. the other night. You've been to the Grammys. Mm -hmm. Is, have you seen somebody get arrested like that and win three Grammys in the same? <laughs> Let's be real for a minute. I mean, I have some of this. It just pops up. I mean, I want to believe that Killer Mike staged that. I want to believe that because it's genius. <laughs> <laughs> Biggest publicity I've ever seen for Grammys ever. Yeah. They waited. I mean, this the biggest. Yeah, it's like the biggest. What people was like. Some people was like, "Who is Killer Mike?" And I, of course, I'm a huge fan of Killer Mike. He's, I am too. As a human, as a person, as a rapper, he's woof. He's that boy is vicious. Oh my god. And he's but he's a great thought leader. And we don't talk on the phone often. I haven't talked to him in years, probably. We talk back and forth, text, talk. But life moves around. But I really hope in my in, in the smile in my heart is that he put that together. Cause he is more famous than he's ever been in his career. He right pulling now. A, he pulling a Cat Williams because Cat Williams sure went on Shay Shay and put that all together. Oh and man, broke that's the another internet. thing. I didn't think about he that, broke man. The what did that do though? What did it do? I mean, I'm trying to understand <laughs> what okay, the comedians is beefing now. What did it do? What did it accomplish for our culture? That's what I so <laughs> <laughs> I was at Hove House one time. He said, gangsters don't do tell-alls. And it mm. stopped me in my tracks. Because there's certain things that I will never say. Um, and, or the names will be changed to protect the guilty. Right. But I don't think Cat Williams fits into gangster. No. No. I feel like he's just Well, I don't know. He got up and he said he'd hit Cedric in his stomach. That and, don't mean that he a gangster. He, 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 I've heard some gangsteristic stories on him, okay? My partner, he, uh, he's he's he he pulled guns on people. Does he's tried empty guns. It didn't have a bullet in it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the worst <laughs> gun to pull. Because you pull it because my my mine do got bullets in it. <laughs> yeah, and you know, yeah, and it's gonna go bad. Yeah, don't do that. So to anybody just, out there, don't pull empty <laughs> guns on people, dog. So I mean, like, is, what is it with the comedy guys? I mean, is this? I mean, Club Shay Shay. Monique just went on there. She outed. Uh, uh, but she did her thing. She said, "Baby, um, she said, baby, baby. I, um, I love." It. Yeah, 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 yeah. But what is it? What is it? What is it doing to our people? Where did it come from? I mean, yeah, we've had com comedians come on our show and do some crazy things, but they're on another level with it. What does this do? Is this funny? Should we joke? So, <laughs> here's my here's my observation, right? I was somewhat shocked by Cat Williams. But understand this. Humans are designed to be attracted to and follow loud men because loudness comes from a place of security. Wow. Mm. So you can feign that if you're a good actor. And I said, hey, everybody, come on. We going outside, we finna whoop, dude, right the fuck now. People gonna be like, okay, I feel that. That vibration, in, it um, engenders something inside me to make me wanna follow this person. So I'm like, let's go, charge. We are designed to follow that person. So when this guy's out here talking loud, but you can be strong and wrong. You can be strong and wrong. I think he went, I think he was protecting himself, you know. Sergio the Entertainer is somebody who I've worked with, who I care about, you know, and Cat Williams is somebody who I met and I care about as well. But that's just from the black man's standpoint. You know, we, we, don't, we, we don't really have the luxury to not give a person the benefit of a doubt. So giving Cat Williams the benefit of a doubt, I feel like he came and he aired out his dirty laundry and other people's dirty laundry and stuff too. But he's an entertainer and he's a comedian. And I don't see where there's a line of delineation between the two. I don't see where it is. I, unfortunately, I feel like this is what comedians do in real life. Do is Kevin Hart a, what they call it? A plant? Industry plant. Is he an industry plant? <laughs> Kevin Hart. What's up? What's up, Kev? Shout out to Kevin Shout Hart. Shout out to Kev Hart. He was roommates. People don't know this. I don't know if D-Ray ever talked about it. D. Ray Davis, who yeah, was my shout brother. Out D. Ray Davis. D. Ray Davis. They were roommates. Yeah. Wow. What up, folks? They came from the ground. They got it out the mud. 
out the mud. I don't wow. see. But if he was a plant, then he was a plant in the mud. <laughs> it was a hell of a plant. It was a hell of a right? plant. Came up from the under. You feel me? And um, D. Ray Davis is hilarious. Mm-hmm. Probably to me, more hilarious than Kevin Hart. But Kevin Hart is a great comedic actor because of his timing and his ability to be vulnerable is what makes him so special, I think. Did, that, did the dress help? <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's talk about it. I mean, these, 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 the dress is uh, em- uh, emasculating men. I mean, this is a com- de- yeah, de- Is this a real thing? I'm, I'm, I'm in here interviewing people and I'm hearing all kind of stuff. You put the dress on, you make more money. Some people put the dress on still broke. I mean, what's That's going what I'm on? saying. I don't think that <laughs> being feminine make you more money. I know a lot of niggas that's super feminine and they, they sweeping up hair at the at the motherfucking beauty shop. Mm-hmm. I don't think that just like you get a special nigga, if that was the case. You gotta be funny. Them niggas, you gotta do all kind of shit. You gotta go to work, mainly. And it can't just be fantastical. I'm, you know, this gotta be strategy. You, that dream ain't enough. That goal ain't enough. It's gotta be planned. It's gotta be strategy. It's gotta be tactics implemented. And I think Kevin Hart checked those boxes. No, nah, he was a hard worker, and the movies are dope. And 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 you know, stand up ain't bad. It, dope stand up. Yeah, he's hilarious to me. I, I want to ask. You said D Ray is more funny than to me as a stand up. Right. Yeah. Do you think that um, Mike Epps is more funny than D Ray? I don't know. Dude, well, Mike Epps a beast, man. I, lo- I love folks. I love folks too. <laughs> but you know, I'm biased to D Ray. We camp together and mm-hmm. on sharing the same stages. I'm a spoken word artist at first, and I used to host a lot right. of comedy shows. So I'm like Damon Williams, Dion Cole, B Cole, all of them are my people. Bernie Mac, I, I did Bernie Mac. I did Bernie Mac. Uh, he hosted an open mic. I, I performed there. Do you think it was right for Shannon Sharp and, 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 <laughs> and Mike Evans to come this. to you know? To, they, 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 they they threatening each other on online, like back and forth. Like when I see you, it's up. Mm-hmm. When I see you, I'm gonna see you. Then one other will get on there. Mike get on there and say, "When you well, come on, cause we're gonna be at the All Star together. Mm-hmm. This is getting intense." And he said, "I'm not gonna fight I'm not, you. I don't do no fight. I don't do fight. You know, I so, do something else." I, okay, what's going on? Like I said, what is going on, man? I mean, Mike Epps is really cool with, with one of my one of my big bros. He is cold spoken artist from Chicago named Red Storm, mm-hmm. and um, that's his man. I think they was locked up together. But um, that's his man, man. And um, I've only heard great things about about bro. Yeah. You know, and I've only heard great things about Shannon Sharp. Shannon Sharp. You know, he's a protector. Club Shay Shay. He's a protector and stuff. But this fame is a different kind of drug, man. Man, this stuff is something else, man. <laughs> what, what, Hove said it. Not to be quoting Hove and shit too much, because I don't, you know, but I don't want to take no, no thunder from Big Bro, but he say, fame is the biggest drug known to man. Have yes, you I, met... Stronger than heroin. Oh, love. Then it's stronger than heroin. It's strong. <laughs> Who have you ever met that um, came up from nothing and, the fam- and up there and have not changed at all? Fame never changed them. Hove? I met Hove in 1996 at All-Star Weekend in the Hilton Hotel when um when uh my boy um was bringing us through getting the New York jackets this mm-hmm. the all-star jacket they had a guy making them we we got the bootleg joints they was expensive as fuck though <laughs> Allen Houston was playing and for the Knicks at the time and I met Hove and he's not been different since that day that was 96 mm. all-star weekend wow same person I got. I got to ask you to do something for from me. From the for bottom, I'm from somebody that I know. Hove came from the bottom, and we've right. sat and talked about, you know, him, his father taking him out to. I don't want to put his thunder out there because right. he can say he can say his own shit, but taking them and making them feel like they was lost, and having Hove figure out when he was a little kid how to get back home to the wow. projects, like That's smart. figure your way out. He, but dad, dad's with him. He didn't throw him out to the wild. But he's with him. He's like, you take the lead. Ooh. That's smart. Talking about his dad Teaching going out to sons. try to right. find his brother's killer. Yeah, that's why. You know, his dad disappearing for weeks. Right. So, I, him, and then like, you know, his team, Emery and all them guys, you know what I'm saying? 
And, and I mean, you know, Hove's not somebody that you call every day because he's not your best friend, nigga. But if you need Hove and you it's sincere, man. I got I to gotta ask you to do one from thing nothing, for me. From nothing, that, that person for sure. Mm. Before you get off of here, um, you got to... You're the only poet that we really, a true poet that we've had on the show. So you got to give me something. Some Every spoken time. Word. You're not getting off of here. Some spoken word. Without giving us something. As I grew up, I threw up liquors, gang signs to niggas. For us, a ghetto game was tag, meaning who shoots quicker. There was never a time where, there wasn't a time where people's time was up. I mean, according to the news, the crime was up. This is around the time New York had started coming with that heat and the rhymes was up. It primed me up. Listening to these ghetto laureates do verbal and lyrical pirouettes. I seen the girls, how they acted, they was getting wet. So on my set, we were screaming 12-8 BPS in. Praying to God that we came home safe after we committed an enormous amount of sin. The blocks that we were spin. The amount of gin and juice that Snoop Dogg induced in my neighborhood was atrocious. The locusts smoke us, praying to God that they don't smoke us. Put you in the blunt and give it a name. Then we go back, get revenge on them, and we do the same. You hear it? It smells like teen spirit. That's shorty being smoked and then put into an ashtray. A girl that we didn't know, we hidden raw, but as we lay. And as the day turned into the night and then back into itself, it's time once again to take your number one tool off the shelf. Wow, mm. man. So was it <laughs> hey man, I gotta ask I gotta, you. I, gotta, I, I got one more question, and you're not answering that question. <laughs> Keefy D, man, he got locked up since you've been on here for Pox. Uh, did that surprise you? They pick him up after thirty, it was it twenty something years. Mm -hmm. And Keefy D, entertainer. I don't know why they picking him up. He, he entertainer, man. You know, free Keefy D, man. Wow, he got a bun now. He do? Yeah. He it's got a bun, like, but he ain't paid it. It's like, I think it's 75000 or oh, something. Oh, that ain't bad. No, it's, but that's it, but, how much cash they need. But ain't nobody paid it for him. He's still locked up. They got to do a bun reduction. They got to get it down a little more. We don't get him up out of there. I'll figure him out. What? You know what I'm saying? Now, I'm not trying to say he going to come on, I'm going to do something to him and no shit like that. You know what I'm saying? But, I mean, Keefy D, is, is, he's an entertainer, man. I mean, mm -hmm. how, the, how the fuck y'all... This man got, y'all got no gun on this motherfucker. He, he's doing interviews. There ain't no confession. You know? What the fuck, man? It's crazy out here, man. It's crazy he's out here. He's that book. And then Vlad, he's talking about um, investigative reporter, that he's an investigative reporter. That's, he helped with that case. Mm. That's what he said. Well, I'm going to say this. Free slime. Y'all ain't got nothing on, on bro. Free young thug. Wow. Yeah. Free, Free young slime. thug. You know, all this shit about... I mean, if you listen to my music, I should be under the prison. Oh, they talking in there like, okay, uh, yeah, he said this, he said that. Yeah, listen to my music. I should be under the prison, nigga, like right now. Listen to the shit I say. Yeah, I'm going to give you one last yes. question before we wrap <laughs> this so, up. He got to catch a flight. Yes, yeah, so Grammy Weekend, um, I noticed you worked with Tutu Productions and you did two, like... Two, two. Right, Tutu Tutu. Um, what exactly did y'all do? Because it looked like they you did an in-depth in interview or something. We did a couple things. Two, two, two is like I'm bringing them on. I'm trying to bring them on and get a contract with them to work with them on stuff because they 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 know film school students, but they just excellent shooters. What they do with Derek Grace, what they do with Rick Ross, and um, those are people I kind of feel like I'm in the same vein. Ross, another come up from the ground, you know, type individual who always been good to me and makes to my in my opinion great great hip hop. Um, so. Two 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 is like some of the most talented guys I've ever met. 
they're astute. They they work ethic is crazy. But we shot a bunch of stuff, like in that Grammy weekend. I shot a couple like little videos. They filmed everything, all my Grammy events, all my performances, and they got edits already. It's been a week, and they got edits <laughs> ready mm -hmm. to go. So we filmed a lot of stuff that's going to be coming out. A couple of interviews. I don't know if I could talk about some of them. That's what I was wondering if you could. Yeah, I can't. I was, come on, I can't talk about. Don't them. mess up your money, man. <laughs> mess up your money messing around with Miss Jamaica. It looks she amazing, though. She, <laughs> she gonna make you lose the check. <laughs> hey, man. No, we love you, man. Thank like you so much man. for coming on the show. Shout out, again. Danny Boy. Danny Boy. <laughs> hey, man. My brother, listen. I love you, dog. Listen, man. We we just appreciate you for coming back on the show. Anytime we up here, you know this is our time when we be in the city. You know we in Vegas. You you watching the moves, so you mm -hmm. know. Now, killing right now hey man just know y'all on fire but you know like I'm, I'm gonna say this to you man like whenever something like that happens don't let people t say that y'all have sold y'all soul or something when they see the blow up they want to say and they did a deal with the Illuminati they got a dress <laughs> and it's a dress somewhere <laughs> coming you know what take it man hey man it's been another shout to all the niggas in dresses oh, getting get their money these clips man make sure you guys watch the next clip on Malik Yourself man dope interview man check it man it's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101 what a boss is